The snow rests pale on the naked metal of the shacks around me. The pastel paint stripped away in ugly patches. The rusted iron underneath layers orangish red at my intrusion, like a thousand fiery eyes set on the suffocating whiteness that's all around me. There's no one here in this deserted little village, this island in an endless sea of white and capricus cold. There's nothing else for miles, it seems. I'm all alone here. All I can do, all I can do is wait for the ceaseless wind to dismantle me, to chip away at me until the red rust underneath my painted facade is all exposed, and I become as silent as the town around me. I press myself up against the side of a shack to get out of the wind. Hear shrieks and murmurs fade ever so slightly as I hide. I slowly ease myself onto the porcelain white ground and draw my knees to my chest to protect the waning heat in my core from the lashes of the cold. Daniel. No louder than a whisper. I'm sure I've imagined it. My name called from across the village, sounding as if it was shouted. But the wind rushing through the squat houses almost stole it away before it reached me. I stumbled to my feet heaving my body upward and craning my head towards the voice. I take a few steps towards it, the ice and snow forcing deliberate and careful steps, taunting me, who has no energy for such things. I walk onward, and even as I approach, I feel the wind rushing by my face, taking with it bits of warmth, chips of paint. I reach the farthest flung house. There's no one here. Everything is silent and still, besides the shuddering of my shoulders as the coal lifts the warmth from them in sheets. The wind strips away the paint from everything. I'm raw, red, rusty. The orangish red eyes grow wider, amazed that I persist in movement amongst them. Daniel. Again. The voice calls. No louder than before. Daniel. I must have missed it in the din shrieks and murmurs. This time, though, the voice comes from behind me, on the other side of the village, back where I was. My eyes water as the wind tries to pry them out. I begin trudging towards the voice. Perhaps we pass each other. Perhaps whoever is out there is pursuing me, just as I pursue them. And as the wind passed both of us, I march in loose, fumbling steps towards the voice, back through the town back through all the red eyes. I fall once or twice. <sighs> it feels so good to rest. I might just fall asleep there. I rise each time, however. The voice draws me onward. I reach the other end of the village, looking out into the stormy sea of ice on all sides of this little island of paint and bleary red eyes. There's no one here but me. Daniel. Daniel. The voice calls once again, with muffled insistence, but no closer than ever. Somehow now, from the opposite side of the decrepit shacks that beckon me, Daniel. I turn to it, but I can't face those eyes. Not again. Oh, I'm so very cold. Daniel. Oh, it feels so good to rest. 